Section 3.5 is the last memorization work, double angle and half angle formulas. So the first objective is going to be to use double angle formulas to find exact values and then we're going to use double angle formulas to establish identities and then we're going to use half angle formulas to find exact values. So these two things are related, that's why they're in the same section. So here are the double angle formulas and notice that there's one for the sine of two theta. If you have an angle theta and you double it, the way you find its sine is you take the sine of the original angle, the cosine of the original angle, and find the product and double that. And again, this is a theorem that can be proved. It's not just a made-up formula. Then notice there are three versions of the cosine of the double angle, cosine of 2 times theta. So I memorize this first one, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And notice that if I replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared theta, that's, that's how I get the second one. And then if I replace sine squared theta with 1 minus cosine squared theta, see how I get the third version where I have 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So I don't remember all three of these. I just remember the first one and then remember how to find the other one. So that's what I would suggest. So objective one is going to be to use the double angle formulas to find exact values. So we're given that we have an angle that's in quadrant one. So I always draw pictures of these angles. Here's my angle that's in quadrant one. Its name is theta. What I know about theta is that it has a cosine of three-fifths. So let me draw a picture of an angle theta that has a cosine of three-fifths. So then I know the third side length is a 4 for a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So the sine of 2 theta, and I would suggest doing this, write the formula and then plug the numbers into the formula. The more times you write the formula, the better it will stick in your mind. So you're going to have 2 times. The sine of theta is 4 fifths, and the cosine of theta is 3 fifths. So you're going to get that the sine of the double angle, the angle that's twice as big as this theta that we're looking at here, its sine is 24 fifths. And then if we want to do the cosine of 2 theta, I'm going to use this version that I remember easily, cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. So I'm going to say the cosine of theta is 3 fifths, and I want to square that minus the sine of theta is 4 fifths, and I want to square that. So I'm going to have 9 20 fifths minus 16 20 fifths, negative 7 20 fifths. And just so you think about where the double angle must be, it has a negative cosine and a positive sine, so 2 theta must be in quadrant 2. Right? Doesn't that make sense? And that makes sense. If you double an angle between 0 and 90, you're going to get something between 0 and 180. So we got something more than 90 in this case. So I'll let you do number 12. And I strongly recommend that you don't use the Pythagorean identity on these problems, but that you draw pictures and, and draw out the angles and figure out the missing sides. So then we're going to use double angle formulas to establish identities. So we want to come up with an identity for the tangent of 2 theta. Well, the tangent of any angle is the sine of that angle over the cosine of that angle. So it's the sine of 2 theta over the cosine of 2 theta. So it's 2 sine theta cosine theta over cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So that's one variation of it. 
Well then, if I divide, well, multiply by 1 over cosine squared theta over 1 over cosine squared theta, so this equals 1, right? It's a fancy looking one. So I'm going to distribute on the top and I'll have 2 sine theta cosine theta over cosine squared theta over cosine squared over cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. So notice that one of these cosines cancels and you get 2 tangent of theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. So this is another variation of how to find the tangent of 2 theta. So any way that you go about it is fine. So let's look at some more identities and here we have the cotangent of 2 theta. Well the cotangent of 2 theta is always going to be 1 over the tangent of 2 theta, right? So in fact it could look like 1 minus tan squared theta over 2 tan theta from this identity that we just created and the reciprocal of it. And then we could rearrange and see if we can come up with cotangent minus tangent. So I'm going to go back to writing tangent squared as sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. I'm going to sine theta over cosine theta on the bottom. And then I want to come out with a cotangent somehow. So let me multiply by cosine squared on the top and the bottom so I can go back to what I had. So I'm going to get cosine squared minus sine squared over 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then I can see that I have a subtraction here, so that's a good thing. So maybe I can separate it out. Here's the one half right here. And then I'll have cosine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta minus sine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta. I think I'm getting there. These cosines will cancel and have one half cotangent theta. These signs will cancel and I'll have tangent theta. So that's an example of establishing an identity. So now let's look at the half angle formulas. And I developed those by starting with the double angle formulas and don't remember a whole separate set of half angle formulas. So I start with the cosine of 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So this is one of the double angle identities that we already figured out. If I solve it for two for sine squared theta, that means I need to subtract cosine 2 theta from both sides and add 2 sine squared theta to both sides. So on the left I'm going to have 2 sine squared of theta and that's going to equal 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. So make sure that makes sense to you then that means that the sine squared of theta equals 1 half times 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta. That makes sense. So the sine of theta must equal plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. So this is an identity that we got just by rearranging an identity that we already have. Well, what I make sh want to make sure you realize is that these identities, the theta is just a symbol. And all it's saying is whatever symbol is here, something twice as big goes here. So if you have sine of 2 alpha here, it will be plus or minus 1 minus cosine 4 alpha over 2. It's whatever's in the first spot, double that is in the other spot. So if I put sine of beta over 2, I would have 1 minus cosine beta over 2. Well, this is what we call the half angle identity. So it really comes from the double angle identity. 
So these identities can be used in lots of ways. We could say that the sine squared of theta over 2 from this one, so if we say, oh, put something half as big in the argument at the beginning, then something half as big will be in the argument of the other side. Or you could say that the sine squared of 2 theta, so if you double the theta here, that's going to be 1 half times 1 minus cosine 4 theta. So look for the pattern. And then to find the second part, you're going to use this identity. So let's start with that one and say cosine squared of theta equals 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. So the cosine of theta equals plus or minus square root 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. So again, if I put theta over 2 in here, then I'm going to get 1 plus cosine theta on the other side. And then if I want to know what's cosine squared of 2 theta, it's going to be 1 plus cosine of 4 theta over 2. And if I do cosine of theta over 2, it's plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. So the relationship is whatever is here, twice as big as here. And so these are called the half angle identities. So we can use these identities to develop a formula for tan squared theta, because tan squared theta is sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. So let me pause here.